All right, we're basically halfway through the season. Week 8 just ended, so now I think it's about time we could talk MVP. I think people talk about MVP rankings way too early. They want to talk about it after week 3, week 2, week 4. It gets old. People talk about it way too early. But now is when we can start to see what things are looking like, and I think we should start talking about who he thinks in these rankings. So at number 5, I got Tom Brady. Now, he's got a lot of talent around him, so I can't put him higher. On, on top of the fact he hasn't played as well as the people above him, I don't think. But we got to give him a lot of credit for his leadership on that team, for his way he started to turn that culture around. We saw it the week they lost to the Bears. They were real sloppy, tons of turnovers. He needed he had a lot of blame because he couldn't remember if it was third or fourth down. It was on him. It was on the whole team. But you have to know that he played a part of that, coming from that Patriots culture, turn around in the next week. There was no penalties, no turnovers, no sacks, and they blew out the Packers, and they've been fairly smooth sailing since. They barely just beat the Giants. He didn't play that well, but they got past him. They're 6-2 right now. He's dealt with a lot of injuries. Chris Godwin's been in and out. Mike Evans has been dealing with stuff. A new addition's coming in. Ronald Jones has been playing well, but he's, he's dealt with injuries. He's got 20 touchdowns to four picks. He's had a great season. And they're on a new team. They're looking real good, so I got him at number five. Number four, I got me some Aaron Donald. I can't put him any higher because he's not a quarterback. It's just that simple when it comes to the NFL. You have to be outstanding, the best of your position by quite a bit to even get on a top five without being a quarterback. Quarterbacks just have so much more impact on the game. But Aaron Donald, he has quarterback-like impact. If you look at... The first week, it's the Cowboys, the disruption they he made that they probably wouldn't have won without him. Every game, watching him, you just turn it on and he pops off the screen. It's very rare a defensive tackle does this, where usually the great, even the great defensive tackles, you gotta like look to see that he's getting double teamed and he's freeing up stuff. But he's slipping through them. He's getting to the quarterback within two seconds. Sometimes he just blows the plays up all the time, and he's played for a team that. The offense has been shaky, inconsistent. You saw the Bears a couple weeks ago. It was low scoring the whole time, and then eventually the offense got some points on the board, and the whole time they just held down the Bears with Nick Foles with him getting a lot of pressure and helping other guys get pressure. The only defensive tackle I can remember jump, jumping off the screen in my lifetime just from what I've watched, I'm sure there's a couple others, but the one that I think of is Kyle Williams for the Bills. Underrated because the Bills didn't do any winning, but he was a guy that was able to get to the quarterback like that. Aaron Donald's even better. And it, and the fact that he's been able to impact winning as defensive tackle, real impressive. So I got my number four. But at number three, I got Aaron Rodgers. The quarterback just able to do more. You watch, look at his schedule. The two games he's lost, the one against the Buccaneers was bad, but... You could have had a great performance from him. The rest of his team was so bad, they wouldn't have won the game. Maybe it could have been close, but they wouldn't have won. And in the Vikings game, sure, you could hope you'd do more. You, you could look at it and say, you know, they only put up 22 points. But the defense couldn't stop Delvin Cook from taking time off the, off the clock so he didn't get as many opportunities and just running all over them, scoring four touchdowns on them. That's on Aaron, on Aaron Rodgers. And then the six wins, they won every other game. It's been high scoring. He's been putting up numbers. They've had to go against other high-scoring teams, being the Saints, 37 to 30. It's been, it's been a year where it's looked a little rough towards the end, like the recent, the recent weeks. But we still got to look at the totality of it. He's the third in the MVP P ranking. He's quite a bit below the other two I got coming up yet, coming up after. But he's deserving. 20 touchdowns, the two picks, 113 passer rating. He's having a great year. And the guy look at the fact that he only really has one great receiver to throw to as well. Number two. We got Mahomes and we got Russell Wilson left. Who am I going to say? They're neck and neck. But Mahomes boy's number two. I feel like people are sleeping on him a little bit because it is neck and neck. I feel like a lot of people want to say Russell Wilson just automatically. But we still got to give Mahomes his credit. Just because he's been amazing in the past two years doesn't mean we can overlook what he's done. 20 touchdowns, was it 20? 21 to passing touchdowns to one interception this whole year. They're 7-1, and one, and their one loss was when their defense just could not stop Derek Carr and the Raiders. He's got great weapons, so that's what holds him down to number two. The defense has been great most of the year, but you can't overlook 
how great, how great he's played, how every week you could just count on them putting points and there being a problem. The fact that they're pretty much going to be favored in every game because just how simply he's just going to make the plays happen. Gets outside the pocket, makes great plays all over the field, can make any type of throw. He's had a great year. Can't overlook him as an MVP candidate. He's still within very close reach of Russ. But at number one, it's not a question. It's Russ ridiculousness. Russell Wilson. It's about time he gets himself an MVP. He already should have won. Not last year. Maybe last year. It, should, it was neck and neck. They wanted to act like it was. they gave it unanimously to Lamar. They were right neck to neck. I think Lamar Jackson might have slightly deserved it, but that, I'd have to take another look at that. The one that Russell Wilson really should have had was the one Cam Newton won. I know everyone wants to say they were 15-1. and one. He played, he had a great season, best season of his career. He did. It was an MVP-level season. But go back and look at what Russ did. It can't just be the best quarterback on the best team, which is what it is too often. Football is too much of a team sport for that. You've got to look at his impact. In that season, Russell Wilson, his team wouldn't have gone as far as it did if it wasn't for him playing great. The second half of that season, he played like he has the first half of the season, which is why he's now number one in my, in my MVP rankings. Hasn't received one MVP vote because he's not part of the storylines that they have for the whole season. You know, when a team starts winning, they just want to give it to the quarterback or sometimes the more flashy guy, you know, the Cam Newton, the Lamar Jackson, got a little more pizzazz to them. But Russell Wilson, this year alone, Russell, Seahawks are 7-1. and one. The one loss... It was on him. He didn't play nearly as well. He made too many mistakes. But the rest of the seven, if you put an average quarterback there, they'd be probably three and five right now. The defense has been so bad. The the Patriots game where he carried, the Vikings game where he just game winning drive. This is just off the top of my head. There's probably there's a couple others that you could say. But those two, like automatically no chance without Russell Wilson. And you can't say the same for Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, they'd probably be like they're set. They were they're seven and one, so they'd probably be like five and three, four and four. Russell Wilson, they may they would maybe have three wins without him. They wouldn't have even beat the Falcons week one most likely. They might be like two and six, how bad they are without Russ. But or two and five, they're they're six and one. They're not seven and one. My fault. I mess up with the bye weeks. But regardless, his impact on the Seahawks. The fact that defense hasn't been good this whole season. They're getting better. He has great weapons, but he doesn't have the amount of amazing weapons that Patrick Mahomes has. With Le'Veon Bell, Edwards O'Leary, Reek Hill, McCall Hardman, Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey. You could just keep going and keep going. Russell Wilson has DK, Tyler. David Moore's a good number third, but you know nothing special. Chris Carson, and then that's really all there is to talk about. So the fact that he's elevated... That he's 26 touchdowns to six picks. He's clutch as they comes. When it comes down to those game winning drives, you trust him. I trust him more than anybody in the league. It's gotta be Russell Wilson, number one. That's my MVP halfway through the season. You know, other guys are still within re- distance. It's really a Mahomes Wilson race right now. He's within distance. But if it stays how it is, Russell's definitely the MVP. It should be his second, but hopefully he gets his first this year. And at least his first MVP vote. Come on. But if you made it this far, Like, subscribe if you haven't, and drop a comment. Let me know what you think.